Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you these two wooden puzzles from the Australian brand Mr. Bob Puzzles. So Mr. Bob were kind enough to send these over to me to try out and review. Uh, before we look at these in more detail, I'll just let you know a little bit about Mr. Bob as a brand. So they are a family run business based in Perth over in Western Australia. And they also happen to be the largest wooden jigsaw manufacturer in Australia too, which is pretty awesome. Um, Mr. Bob is also very focused on things in the community, which I love. Um, so one of the things they did previously was partner with an organization which supports uh, students who have intellectual and de developmental disabilities and provides them with work experience. So yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, so Mr. Bob actually started off selling uh, wooden puzzles which were made offshore, but what they really wanted to do was offer an Australian made puzzle option instead. Um, so they began uh, creating these beautiful wooden puzzles uh, made entirely with Australian materials and made here in Australia. And so one of the key features of their wooden puzzles is that they're extra thick. They happen to be 4.5 millimeters thick, which is quite a bit thicker than some of the wooden puzzles available. A lot tend to be about three millimeters thick. So yeah, I'm really excited to try this out, sort of see what the sort of thicker pieces are like. Um, and another uh, optional feature, I guess, that I quite like is that you can have your wooden puzzles infused with Australian flora essential oils. So yeah, I can smell it already and it smells really nice. So yeah, I'm excited to sort of have that scent while I'm puzzling. And very recently they started offering uh, a new uh, Australian made puzzle option, which is their fiberboard uh, puzzles. Uh, so these ones are a bit thinner. They are 3.5 millimeters thick and they happen to be a more sort of economical option um, and also lightweight. So that's really good if you are ordering these puzzles from overseas. Um, so let's look at these in more detail. So this one here is one of their 4.5 millimeter thick wooden puzzles. It's called Gostwick Chapel by the uh, photographer Gary Schlatter and it's 751 pieces. And I have been uh, told that this happens to be uh, one of their most challenging or maybe the most challenging puzzle in their collection. So I'm both excited and a little apprehensive to put this one together. Um, but yeah, it's just a stunning image or like this sort of panoramic landscape and features this lovely chapel here covered in these like bright, rich red like leaves. And yeah, it's all this like beautiful, vivid uh, trees and foliage. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful, stunning image. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to piecing this one together. And then the other one they sent me is one of their new uh, fiberboard puzzles. So this is the 3.5 millimeter thick ones. And this one is 252 pieces. So a lot smaller than this one. Um, and it's called Mum, There's a Cow in the Yard by the artist Sue Jansen. Um, and this is just a really fun and very like silly comical uh, image. And like the mum just looks completely flustered. And I think she's got like seven or eight kids that are all like getting into mischief and trouble and she just looks very over it um, but yeah it's the sort of scene behind her is like a very sort of Australian kind of landscape with like I guess like gum trees and the sort of um, like tin roofed house and water tank so yeah it's all quite Australian like Australian sort of farmland um, yeah and so something I should mention as well is that uh, Mr. Bob also only uh, uses work by Australian artists. So yeah, I think that's a really nice touch as well. So in a sec, um, I'm going to be uh, actually doing this puzzle first and then we'll move on to this one. So we will unbox it, have a look at the pieces and of course get puzzling. First up, let's have a look at the packaging. So the first thing I noticed actually is the weight of it. It is quite a hefty, like weighty puzzle. Uh, so I guess we've got some nice big uh, chunky puzzle pieces waiting for us inside and yeah and the box itself is very strong and sturdy like it's pretty solid so it'll definitely protect your puzzle so that's good um, so on the front here we've got the I guess yeah it must be the whole image which is a uh, landscape image actually um, of the puzzle and we've got the Mr. Bob puzzles logo here we've got Gostwick Chapel which is the name of the puzzle and by Gary Schlatter, which is the artist. And then on this side over here, we've got 
751 pieces wooden jigsaw puzzle and it says including whimsical pieces and it's got the size here in millimeters but i'll pop uh, the size at the top as well in inches so it's 890 by 290 millimeters so it's quite a long skinny puzzle um, so let's look at the sides we've got here kind of the same information i more or less Ugh. It's a bit of a heavy box. So we've got the yeah, name of the puzzle, the artist or photographer. Again, a smaller version of the whole image. It does have these black strips as well, but I don't think that's part of the puzzle. It can't be, I guess, based on the size. It's just part of the image here. Um, yeah, the size again, the number of pieces, the same information about it being a wooden jigsaw puzzle. But we also have a little uh, Australian made logo here which is I think only ever gets put on like you know uh, things that are definitely considered made in Australia so it's kind of yeah it's nice to know that and then that exact same information is repeated on the other long side and then I think the short sides are the same as each other so again we've got uh, the name of the puzzle the name of the photographer the puzzle image size pieces and that little bit of information and yeah that's repeated on this side and then if we turn this around the box uh it's a bit of a pattern here actually like a little subtle pattern but anyway we've got quite a bit of information here so we've got here um australian themed whimsical pieces included in all mr bob puzzles wooden jigsaw puzzles australian made finest quality wooden jigsaw puzzles and it actually says the thickness so of the pieces so it says 4.5 millimeters thickness so yeah that's a pretty a pretty thick piece size from as far as i know um, and it says infused with 100 percent pure australian bush essential oils um, and i can definitely smell it so i'm like excited to open this up and you know get more of that um, and yeah i know on the website you can actually choose whether or not you want your wooden puzzles to have that like essential oils infused so yeah i think it's kind of a nice option um yeah and it's just got the socials the australian made logo again a little bit of warning and then in the middle it's got mr bob puzzles australian made wooden puzzles um mr bob puzzles represents the work of passionate and talented australian artists including gary schlatter which is the artist or photographer for this one and then it just says you know for more information about the artist go to the website and then there's some fun info over here. It says 10 life benefits of jigsaw puzzle solving. I won't read everything, but it's like improved memory, enhanced problem solving skills, enhanced visual spatial reasoning, increased IQ. That's good to know. Um, delay dementia and Alzheimer's, improved mood, uh, lower stress levels, enhanced attention to detail, increased productivity and enhanced collaboration. And it sort of expands on each point. So yeah, kind of a fun little like informative thing to include so let's open this up so yeah the box actually has these little uh, bits cut out so you can like easily just lift the lid off which is pretty cool oh, okay oh this is nice and bright so instead of just white we have this like awesome kind of almost neon really bright green so that's kind of a bit different and i can really smell the essential oils they're like quite i guess yeah fairly strong not like completely overpowering, but you get this really nice like a waft of these oils. So that's really cool. And then we've got some different things in here. So we've got here, um, okay. So we've got a little leaflet here, uh, dear valued customer. Thank you for supporting our Australian made uh, wooden jigsaw puzzles and the their artists as well. And yeah, it just says, it's kind of just a thank you and you know, uh, feedback and suggestions are welcome. And then um, it also has a little bit about explore their range online, um, telling you a little bit about the puzzles. And then on this side, it has that same little sort of 10 life benefits of jigsaw puzzle solving that was on the back of the box. So got that there as well. And then it looks like I've actually got a couple here. I'm not sure if you normally get two, but it's got two in this one. You've got the, I guess, a sort of mini poster of the image, which is good. Um, it's kind of yeah it's funny that it's like so long but i guess that's just the same as the jigsaw puzzle image it is a very like long i guess panoramic landscape um yeah so i've got a couple of these but yeah i'm not sure if you normally get two or if they just sort of accidentally put two in but i'm not complaining it's always handy to have another one especially if you may be working on it with 
someone else that could be handy. So yeah, that's good. And then we've got here a really nice black fabric uh, drawstring bag that all your pieces are in. So that's exciting. So I'll open that up in a sec. Um, it's actually also got this really nice sort of touch to it. So they've attached to the end of one of the sort of strings, this nice little, like their sort of wooden, like little logo, which is really cute. So it's got a little puzzle piece cut out there and it's just got Mr. Bob Puzzles, their logo kind of, I guess, lasered into it. And yes, I think that's a really nice, like special little add on. Like, yeah, it just makes it yeah, really nice, a bit more luxurious. And then the inside of the box is just that plain green. And I forgot to mention the sides of the bottom part of the box. Again, I've just got more of this sort of little pattern. Um, whereas the top part of the box, it's just a black background. This one's black with this yeah, subtle sort of pattern, but each side has kind of like another one of their little logos, which is like, I guess like a little globe or a circle with different colored piece shapes. So that's sort of like part of, I think, when we look at the, oh uh, yeah, so it's the O in the Mr. Bob. So yeah, it's that little sort of circle. So that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, so let's open up these pieces and have a closer look. So it's just, uh oh, let's hope I don't trap myself out of this bag. Okay, no, there we go. This is a pretty big bag. So I think we've got a lot of pieces. I mean, it is 751 pieces, but ooh, looks exciting. such a nice sound all the sort of like wooden pieces like falling against each other and in the box all right Ooh, we've got some like legs sticking up there so i think the bag is empty so that's good all right what is this oh okay this is cool this is one of the whimsy pieces so yeah the puzzle like the box said it includes whimsy pieces and this one looks like a sort of to me like an australian sort of soldier um, yeah, that's cool. Like you can sort of, uh, yeah, like the, uh, the army outfit is sort of like a bit iconic, I think, or maybe it's like a, a farmer or something. Cause they've sort of got that slouch hat or like a sort of country hat. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So, so far I can see all sorts of interesting pieces, like obviously, yeah, whimsy pieces. Here's another one, which is the map of Australia with a kangaroo cut out. So I'm guessing there's a kangaroo in here somewhere. So that's cool. Um, we will have a close up look at all the whimsy pieces shortly. Um, so yeah, the, I guess, yeah, one of the first things I notice is the, the smell, the fragrance of the essential oils. It's yeah, it's really pleasant. It's like, I think it's a really nice touch. Um, it is optional, uh, according to the website. So if you were a bit sensitive to like, you know, strong smells, you don't have to get it, but you know, I think it is a nice touch if you enjoy that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I guess the sort of piece shapes, well, I mean, it's not your normal kind of puzzle. So, but that being said, we do have some sort of like, um, you know, some pieces that look a little bit more like a traditional sort of grid or ribbon cut, even though I guess it, it is and it isn't like it, it is a bit, but obviously it's got lots of whimsy pieces thrown in. So there's only going to be some of these sort of more standard cuts, but yeah, there's definitely some of these in here. So yeah, I won't go through them all, but you know, um, and there definitely seems to be, well, actually I was about to say there does seem to be, you know, lots of edge pieces, but then I realized I found an actual edge piece that has a very straight edge. And this is a bit of a false edge, I think, because the edge is slightly curved. So that might throw me off a little bit. So that's definitely going to make it things a bit more fun and challenging. Um, so let's just grab a random piece, I guess, and um have a look let me grab one that's a bit bigger maybe even a whimsy uh, uh. well let's just grab this one here so the back of the pieces it's just this nice wood and you get a little bit of this sort of you can tell it's sort of been laser cut so yeah it's got a little bit of that scorching which is like very uh, normal with any laser cut wooden puzzle um but yeah, it's just a nice wooden back. And then the thickness of the puzzle is, it's really thick. Like it is 4.5 millimeters, which is, this is definitely, I think the th thickest sort of wooden puzzle I've really seen amongst all the wooden puzzles that I've ever done. Like all of them, 
are usually usually like quite a bit thinner than this so yeah I think this is definitely not going to get damaged easily at all and yeah it's kind of nice and chunky to hold like I think you know having the pieces a bit like thicker is makes it a bit easier to pick up so yeah maybe if you've got um like mobility issues or kids or something like that having the bigger pieces might like thicker pieces might be a bit more fun and easy to sort of puzzle with so yeah that's going to be interesting to try that out and then yeah and then the sides are also this sort of I guess sort of dark browny kind of black color I'm not sure if that's like I'm guessing that's just how it looks from um, being like laser cut but yeah yeah it looks nice I guess um, and then the top is just a very smooth finish with the image on it so I'm not exactly sure how the image was applied but yeah it feels very smooth it is a little bit because of how smooth it is it is a little bit kind of glossy well not, it's not exactly glossy but there is some sheen and glare on it from my extra lighting so we'll have to see how that goes when puzzling how much of an issue that's going to be um, like when I'm just looking at them in general in the box I can see the image nicely um, which brings me to another point the image is looking very bright and clear on the pieces so I can see this blue sky and green leaves and yeah it looks um, the image is a bit small here to see but yeah it looks like it matches the colors pretty well and looks very vibrant and very crisp and clear so that's good um, yeah so that's pretty yeah I'm pretty happy so far with how things are looking it's pretty interesting and a bit different than what I normally do so yeah I'm pretty excited to you know get stuck into this soon but first let's have a close-up look at a bunch of the whimsy pieces so I think I've managed to find most of the whimsy pieces in the puzzle so let's have a quick look at some of them so we've got here the map of Australia and it's actually got the kangaroo cut out which is actually this little guy over here who's like bouncing along very cute and there's also another kangaroo um, which this one looks like it's got a little joey in its pouch so it's cute and then what else have we got? Uh, we've got a whole bunch of these like seagulls. Um, we've also got a whole bunch of like butterflies. That's like I think a few of each one. So that's different sort of variations, um, different yeah, different positions or shapes. And then we've got a few sort of I guess churchy related things. So we've got like this little cherub, looks very cute. And then we've also got like a I guess a cross. And some other crosses I think this is more like meant to be like gravestones or grave markers and this is just a nice intricate cross here and then we've got we've actually got what looks like uh, I mentioned before like an Australian soldier so it's what we'd call like a digger and it tends to be more from like World War One maybe World War Two but it's sort of quite a distinct like uh, uniform silhouette especially this slouch hat which I think they do still wear that hat these days but yeah the rest is a bit more like older style and we've also got here this soldier here who's looking down and looks a bit more solemn so maybe it's sort of like at some sort of official event or like a you know uh, at a grave or something yeah so it definitely feels like there's definitely some sort of uh, these are a bit like uh, Anzac related like that's what we have here in Australia so yeah kind of interesting but yeah it's cool nice sort of Australiana uh, whimsy pieces and then we also have this lady silhouette here she kind of actually looks like she might be a suffragette just um, I'll turn it over you can see she's got like a sash and sort of her the outfit seems to be from the kind of that time period so yeah that might be what she is and then we've also got a couple of other uh, female silhouettes here just sort of like their bust so yeah it's kind of nice this one looks like it's got a oh cute little pill hat on but yeah they're kind of quite nice yeah a lot of these are like really have a lot of detail um, I guess as well kind of relating to the soldiers we have you know some horse shapes here and even like a chess piece horse so that's kind of cool and we've also got some like I've got a couple of horseshoes this one and there's a, a bigger horseshoe as well and then what else have we got um we have oh we've got an m here as well which i think is from like i guess the mr bob logo i don't sh i'm not sure if there's other letters there might be but this is the only one i found so far um we've got 
some stars here, which are seven points, which is what we have on our Australian flag. So that feels very Australian. Uh, I've got like clasping hands here. Um, we've got a cute love heart. We, I don't know, this one's a bit different. We've got like a, I guess, is it a hound? It's like a dog's, is it? Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of dog that is, but like a little bust of a dog. It's, um, yeah, so I'm not sure. And very importantly, we have a teapot. So that's cute. Got a cute little bunny. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's lots of very like cute ones. Um, we have this like random piece here. It kind of looks like a normal piece, but then it seemed to have this star shape. So yeah, I don't know, just thought, saw that. So I'm not sure what that's about, but that's cute. And then I think one of my favorite pieces that I found is this really adorable little climbing lizard. I love its little feet. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, I just like that one. Yeah, I think that might be my favorite. Um, so yeah, there's yeah, a lot of variation. Um, oh, I missed this one. I think it's might be a boomerang. So yeah, I think I've gone through them all. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, there's like oh, quite a variety here. There's definitely some that seem a little bit more related to the chapel. Um, there's some that seem very Australian or very Australiana. And then there's like a few other sort of more random, fun, cute ones. So I think this will definitely be like quite a lot of fun piecing these ones, you know, in the puzzle and figuring, figuring out where they go. So yeah, I think, yeah, looking forward to it. So before we get into puzzling, um, I'm just going to quickly talk about, I guess, how I'm planning to approach this. And it does look like it's probably gonna be a bit of a tricky puzzle because we've got a lot of like leaves and greenery. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm expecting it to be fairly challenging. Um, but that being said, I feel like I can probably still do the edge pieces or border first. I feel like the, you know, there might be some bits like the grass down here, which might be maybe a little bit tricky, um, but definitely some of the like, whew, hard to hold this up. Um, some of the edges look like they're fairly distinct. Um, so we'll give it a try. If it doesn't work, we'll move on to something else. But yeah, I might try that first, uh, especially since it does seem to be, well, there's a few trick edges, but there's definitely some that seem very like flat and straight. So I think it should be easy enough to pick them out amongst these sort of false edges. Um, and then after that, I think the obvious choice might be to pull out the chapel itself covered in these sort of red leaves or vines because that really stands out like that's the focal point of the image so i think we can sort of should be able to spot all the very red pieces and then after that i'm not too sure like whether we pick up bits of sky or even like there's this sort of road here which to me stands out a bit too because it's a bit darker than a lot of other things so yeah i guess part of it's going to be a bit intuitive i'm just going to have to sort of see what stands out to me um yeah, but I think we can at least try the border first and then the, yeah, the chapel. So I guess uh, without any further delay, let's get puzzling.
really loving how this puzzle is looking. It's just so beautiful and the colors are so rich and vibrant. It's yeah, it's just a really beautiful image overall and I really have been enjoying seeing it sort of come together. Um, but that being said, it has definitely been more on the challenging side. Um, so this uh, lot of puzzling, which I guess is kind of roughly halfway, maybe a little bit more, took about two hours and 50 minutes, so just under three hours. That also included all the flipping all the pieces over. So you might have noticed I've sort of treated this puzzle a bit differently than like a normal sort of cardboard uh, 1000 piece. Um, in this instance, I like poured all the pieces out on the board and just decided to flip them all over. Um, and just so I could sort of see them all. Um, so yeah, so the reason why this has been more challenging is for a couple of reasons. One, we're dealing with like a lot of irregular piece shapes. So sometimes you're not quite sure, uh, like, you know, what piece is actually gonna go somewhere, like what might look like a single piece might actually be made up of more than one piece. So it's a little bit tricky with things like that. Um, and that's the same with like, I guess, any puzzle that has a regular piece shape. So it can be a little bit tricky and sort of challenges the way you think. It's definitely a different way of thinking than a normal sort of standard grid cut kind of puzzle. Um, but you know, it's quite fun. I've been enjoying that. And the other thing that makes this puzzle challenging is definitely the image. So obviously this like red uh, chapel here is probably the easiest, but there is like a lot of green grass here and leaves and more grass over here. So it's definitely been yeah, tricky trying to figure out where everything goes. I've got bits here that I've sort of put together, but I'm not quite sure where they go yet. And you know, it's been quite interesting as well because the pieces are like definitely have false edges. So this looks like a corner, it looks like it should go over here, but according to the image, it, it sort of goes around about this area. So it's definitely not the edge. So maybe the top is, but this part isn't. Um, yeah, but I've really been enjoying it and yeah, despite it being challenging, it's not at all frustrating because all the pieces are so varied. It means that, you know, no pieces sort of like fit into the wrong spot or anything. Everything sort of only seems to have one place that it goes. So there's no false fits. Um, so yeah, speaking of false fits, let's talk about the quality. So the quality is going to be, of course, different than your standard sort of 1000 piece puzzle. Um, for a start, this is a wooden puzzle. So uh, with wooden puzzles, as far as I know, all of them always have a very loose fit. Um, that's just the nature of them. Um, or at least that seems to be the case with laser cut. I'm not sure about, you know, other wooden puzzles that might be cut a different way. They could be a bit different, but these always are, you know, looser. Um, so, you know, you can't really pick up sections unless you want to. I know some people tend to like put a piece of paper or something under it to you know, if they want to build a section and move it, they can move it that way. Um, and I know some people as well tend to work with their wooden puzzles on like felt. So the pieces don't slide around too much, but they seem to be not too bad on this. Like, um, yeah, so I've, yeah, I haven't had too many problems with that, but I knew what to expect coming into this. Um, so you do have to uh, be a little bit strategic about you know where you start building things to make sure you have enough room to slide them into place or that you build them close to the area that they're going to go um, yeah so that's been fine and then yeah the like i said there's been no false fits so all the pieces are really you know uh, have a lot of variety in their shape and yeah they don't seem to fit anywhere they shouldn't um, the surface is nice and smooth there is glare there was a little bit of glare but um, at the moment there's glare here from my extra lighting but actually when I was puzzling I didn't have any problems at all with glare in front of me I think in the time lapse there was a little bit like further away but that uh, yeah didn't really impact on my actual sort of putting this part together so yeah completely fine and then yeah wooden puzzles are a bit different in that you know you're not going to get your normal puzzle dust um, they do tend to have a little bit of a tiny bit of dust which ends up being more on your fingers than you know the board like the board is practically spotless um, but I did have to sort of wash my hands after my session of puzzling just because they did feel a little bit dusty um, but it wasn't an issue at all really and I think that's about it I've, uh, yeah there definitely hasn't been any damaged pieces all the pieces are in perfect condition and are looking great um, yeah and I've just really had a lot of fun with all the whimsy pieces and sort of seeing where they go yeah, it's been, yeah, just overall a really fun and enjoyable puzzling experience. So I think um, 
we might as well get back into puzzling in a sec. Um, so let's talk a bit more about how I'm going to put the rest of it together. So actually going back to how I put this together, I did say I was going to start with the edge and border first and I was about to do it, but I sort of realized just how many pieces there were that did have sort of like very straight or flat edges. And I just thought that seemed a bit overwhelming. So I scrapped that idea and went straight to like pulling out colors. So I pulled out the red chapel first and that was quite easy to pull to put, uh, put together. And I pulled out this sort of bluey black road and the greens and these sort of yellowy leaves and sky like sort of white here and blue there. So I've sort of just been doing it that way. And that seems to be working fairly well. I mean, it's still challenging because you've got green here and green here and lots of leaves and they're quite tricky to put together. But for the most part, I'm quite happy with yeah how that sort of strategy is going. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Um, yeah, there's because I'm a bit more familiar with the image now and a lot of it's been put together. Um, I can probably don't have to do as much of that. I can probably start looking more at piece shapes. Um, you know, or yeah, I don't know, just filling in gaps a bit more. Um, I mean, I will, I guess, still sort by color a little bit. Like there is still like a lot of this sort of goldy, brighter green leaves, which I'll probably end up sort of separating. And I have already separated this green grass out here and yeah, and some more sky and stuff. So yeah, I just didn't put the boxes of pieces on the table because they were quite big and this puzzle is like quite wide. Um, but yeah, I think that's just what I'm going to do going forward. Just keep plodding along. Um, so I'm not sure how long the next session will take. Maybe another couple of hours, hopefully less than three hours. Guess we'll see. But yeah, um, anyway, let's get back into it.
I finished the puzzle and I really love how it's turned out. I think it's just an absolutely stunning image, just beautiful colors and they're just so vibrant and yeah, just really rich and beautiful. Um, it was definitely a fairly challenging image to put together. So this second session actually took longer than the first. It took three hours and 10 minutes or thereabouts, which means all up actually uh, from start to finish, including flipping all the pieces over, it took about six hours, which I think is the longest I've actually ever spent on a wooden puzzle. Um, but that being said, I think this is also the highest piece count of wooden puzzles I've ever done. This is 751 pieces. I think the most I've done before is a 500 piece. Um, so, you know, it makes sense that it would take longer. Plus uh, this was quite a, yeah, like the image with all the greenery and foliage is quite tricky. And of course, all the irregular piece shapes and whimsy pieces are like fairly um, kind of test your brain in a different way. They're like, you know, it's different than putting together like a normal, I guess, ribbon cut or grid puzzle. Um, so it's a bit of a, yeah, different way of thinking and approaching the puzzle. Um, but that said, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed the challenge of it. It wasn't frustrating at all. It was completely doable. And yeah, and I just love how the image turned out. Um, so let's talk about the pieces. Um, I really like how thick and chunky they are. Um, they just, you know, feel really nice to hold. Um, yeah, they're just, I think, pretty easy to pick up, which is good, especially if you have, uh, you know, fake nails like me, or, you know, you have trouble picking up like, you know, thinner or smaller things. Um, yeah, I think these are like nice. It makes puzzling a bit more easy and in more fun, actually. I really like the feel of them. Um, and yeah, and everything uh, slots together nicely. No false fits, everything sort of goes where it's supposed to go. Um, and it was, yeah, really fun seeing all the, you know, figuring out where the whimsy pieces go. I really enjoyed that. Um, what else? The, yeah, the surface is nice and smooth there. Is sheen uh, like under certain lighting, but actually when I was puzzling, I didn't have any problems with it. So it's something to note because obviously everyone has different lighting in their house. But yeah, uh, for me, I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, there was no puzzle dust except that little bit left on my hands, which just washed off no problem. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, all the pieces were in lovely condition and yeah, everything was really perfect. And yeah, I just overall had a really great experience putting this one together. And I feel like, you know, this is a puzzle that I could recommend for quite a range of ages and also different uh, skill levels. I mean, obviously it's aimed more at, you know, someone who is looking for a bit more of a challenging puzzle or a puzzle they can take longer to do, um, you know, but I think it's still, you know, doable for people of different skill levels. I also think it'd be really fun to do this with like a couple of people because, you know, because it's such a wide, like landscape puzzle, you know, you could have someone at each end focusing on different parts. So yeah, I think that could be a really fun approach to doing this one. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, so next we're gonna switch over to the other puzzle and of course, you know, unbox it and look at the pieces and of course put that one together as well. So let's take a quick look at the packaging. Um, so it comes in the same sort of box as the larger puzzle, the sort of uh, black and very sturdy, definitely will protect your puzzle. And then on the front is this sort of blue label attached and it's got Mr. Bob Puzzles logo. It's got a lovely little picture here of the entire image. It's got 252 uh, pieces wooden jigsaw puzzle, um, including whimsical pieces and has a size which is 500 by 400 millimeters. And then it's got the name of the puzzle and the artist. So mum, there's a cow in the yard, which is hilarious. And it's by Sue Jansen. And then we've got stuff on the sides here. So we've got Mr. Bob Puzzles logo here, and that's repeated over here. And then on the other two sides, we have um, the name of the puzzle, name of the artist, a smaller image again of the entire image, uh, the size, the piece count, and yeah, including musical pieces. And yeah, that's repeated on this side. And then on the back, we've got some information as well. Um, so we've got here a little column here, which basically talks uh, it says Australia themed whimsical pieces included in all Mr. Bob wooden jigsaw puzzles. So that's kind of nice that they include like this sort of Australiana themed uh, shapes. Um, Australian made finest quality wooden jigsaw puzzles. And actually it says uh, 4.5 millimeters thickness, but this puzzle here is supposed to be one of the new uh, 3.5 millimeter fiberboard puzzles. So I'm, they're quite new. So maybe they just haven't got around to changing 
the size there. So I believe that should be 3.5. Um, and this one also says infused with 100% pure Australian bush essential oils. But I believe, again, that only applies to the thicker 4.5 mil uh, wooden puzzles, not the fiberboard, because when I was looking on the website, the fiberboard didn't actually have an option for the essential oil. So I think this label might be a little bit out of date, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, unless I have a different puzzle than I'm supposed to get, but we'll find out soon. Um, anyway, it's just got the socials, the Australia, Australian made logo, a little warning there. And then on this side, we've got uh, Mr. Bob puzzles, Australian made wooden puzzles, um, Mr. Bob Puzzles represents the work of passionate and talented Australian artists, including, and it's got Sue Jansen, and it just says, you know, for more information, go to the website, and it's got a picture of her and some of her artwork. So, and then, yeah, the back, um, it seems like this is the same for the other box as well. The bottom part of the box has, like, it's not just plain black, it has this sort of little pattern on it, very subtle. Anyway, let's open it up. So, oh, yep, just like the other one, we've got the lovely bright green on the inside. And then we've got here a note. Um, oh, okay. So this is similar to the other puzzle in that we've got like a little uh, thank you note to the, you know, and uh, feedback and suggestions welcome. And you've got here uh, like, you know, explore more of the range on the website. We've got the, like the other puzzle, it includes the sort of 10 life benefits of jigsaw puzzle solving. Um, so it's the same as the other one, so I won't read through it. But I've actually got a little handwritten note here, which says, uh, Dear Justine, that's me, in case you didn't know, I'm also Justine. Um, here is a sample of our 3.5 millimeter thick fiberboard jigsaw puzzle, best wishes, Bob. So that's really cute. So yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, this is actually the uh, 3.5 millimeter fiber board so yeah I'm really excited to try it out very soon so that's yeah it's cute got a handwritten note from Mr. Bob thank you and we've got here a nice little reference poster of the image which again I just think it's the most hilarious very Australian and flustered looking mo so yeah that will be fun to put together and then this one, instead of the black sort of fabric bag, we've got a kind of more canvasy type one, but it also has the nice little sort of wooden, I don't know what you call this, almost like a little keychain thing. But yeah, I really like that. I think that just makes it a bit more special. And yeah. And yeah, then the bottom of the box, it's like the same as the other one, green on the inside, and then has this sort of pattern on it and the little uh, sort of O from the Mr. Bob uh logo so yeah pretty straightforward so uh let's open up the pieces and have a look oh, okay so these ones are, are quite a bit bigger than the other puzzle it still smells like really nice i think this one smells a bit more like wood fire like wood smoke um, whereas the other one definitely had the sort of essential oils in it. Um, so, oh, and these look quite different as well. Um, oh, oh, they feel nice too. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. These are like very different to the, uh, 4.5 millimeter wooden puzzle that we just did. Um, but you know, equally seem very nice. Um, okay. Where do I start? Well, just like the other one, there are still some like sort of traditional, ish piece shapes you know like apart from whimsies so we do have like ones where you know they're sort of classic that almost look like they could be i guess a grid cut well i guess because with these puzzles it seems like some of the puzzle is kind of cut on a grid and then like whimsy shapes sort of inserted amongst it um, so yeah so some of the more i guess normal pieces are definitely a bit more like your traditional kind of grid or ribbon cut with the tabs um, so yeah and then I, we do definitely have, well, I can see a whimsy piece here that says Bob. And I don't know if there's, oh yeah, okay, there does seem to be, okay, there does seem to be some whimsy pieces in here. So we will have a close-up look at those shortly, just like we did with the other puzzle. Because um, I just wasn't sure, like on the website, I couldn't tell. I think I could only see like the Mr. Bob logo. So I just thought it just had that, but no, I'm definitely seeing 
some interesting pea shapes in here. Um, so before we get into that, let's just, I guess, have a look at a random piece. So the back is this like almost very like kind of blonde colored like wood appearance. So it feels very smooth and almost almost feels kind of glossy. Um, I don't know if that's like sort of stuck on or if that is actually like what the fiberboard looks like on the back. Um, yeah, I don't know, but it's really pretty. Like it feels nice and yeah, it looks very nice. It's a really lovely backing. So yeah, it's quite different to any other sort of wooden puzzle that I have. I haven't seen that backing before. And then the thickness is, yeah, well, this is 3.5 mils, so it is thinner than the other one, but it's still like just as thick, if not thicker than like most sort of wooden puzzles that I've sort of seen in the, like, I guess, amongst all the puzzle brands out there. It's definitely like, yeah, still a very uh, thick, re yeah, reasonably nice, thick puzzle piece. Um, and yeah, the sides look more, they have less of that sort of, I guess, charred look. Um, yeah, I don't know. They look, you can kind of see more of like the different layers of the, I guess, fiberboard wood. So yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, definitely not like black or dark brown, like the sort of other one. And, and yeah, and of course it feels, it's definitely very strong and sturdy. Um, yeah, even though it is like a whole millimeter thicker than, uh, thinner than the other one. So, and then the top feels actually quite similar to the back. It's got that very smooth, almost glossy feeling. Um, it isn't specifically glossy, the same with the back, but you know, under certain lighting, you can get a bit of sheen or a little bit of glare showing. So it will be interesting seeing how it is to puzzle with this because to me, it, I'd have to compare it, but it does feel, seem to feel a little bit more glossy or smoother maybe than the other puzzle, um, but not like it's not full on glossy. So yeah, I think it's really just gonna depend on your lighting situation. So yeah, I'll just have to see uh, what it's like when I'm puzzling it without the extra lighting. Um, but yeah, definitely think it looks really nice. And then if we look at it compared to the image, um, yeah, like the colors on these look very, very nice and bright. In some ways they actually look brighter than this image. Maybe, uh, maybe they, I th uh, yeah, maybe they match the image here a little more. Like I feel like this is a little bit brighter than this reference picture, especially like these reds. They definitely, I think, look brighter than like what you're seeing on the image here. So which I guess isn't a bad thing. It's nice that the puzzle pieces themselves are really nice and vibrant, um, especially on an image like this, because I feel like this is definitely more a very whimsical, like uh, maybe more children appropriate image. So it's great that it's like so bright and colorful. Um, yeah, and it looks very crisp. So yeah, um, and I guess I sort of, I think I kind of forgot to talk about puzzle dust when looking at the pieces on the other puzzle, but yeah, there doesn't seem to be any, I guess, my hands feel maybe a tad bit dusty. So I imagine after like a puzzling session, you might need to wash your hands, but like there's no like loose dust in the bag or anything. So yeah, I don't think, you know, there's really any much dust. Um, so enough, I guess, rambling. Let's have a closer look at the whimsy pieces included in this one. And then of course, let's put this puzzle together. So we don't have quite as many whimsy pieces in this puzzle as the other one, but uh, that makes sense since this one is only 252 pieces, so it's quite a bit smaller. And that generally seems to be the case amongst a lot of different wooden puzzle companies. The more puzzle pieces you have, the more whimsies tend to get included. Um, so this one, just like the other one, has the uh, cute little Mr. Bob logo. So it's got all the letters here. Uh, this one does have the word Bob as one whole whimsy piece though, um, whereas the other one had it sort of more split up into lots of little abstract pieces. But yeah, so that's cool that that's included. I think the Mr. Bob logo might be in all of the puzzles, which is a nice touch. And then we have the lovely map of Australia and of course the little kangaroo that, you know, goes inside it. So our little sort of jumping kangaroo. And then what else have we got? We got this lovely big, what looks like maybe a daffodil flower or some other sort of flower. So that's, yeah, it's a fun one. And then we have here, what looks like a very good boy, very cute little 
doggo. So that's a very fun one to have in there. And then we've got, this is the one that was in the other puzzle too, which I missed. Um, it was like what I call the bonus piece or the piece I didn't discover till later. Um, and yeah, it's just this man's uh, silhouette with this sort of looks like he's got a fedora on. And then we've got what looks like a seagull here. And then we've got, because the uh, image of the puzzle was sort of looks a bit rural or a bit like on a sort of farm or something, we've got here a cow, which is really cute. And I like actually that this cow, they've managed to include some of the sort of cow print on it and a kind of a love heart shape. So that's very cute. So yeah, I like the cow, it's a cool one. And we have a couple of chooks or chickens here. So these are really cute as well. So I also like that um, both these ones and the whimsies from the other puzzle, uh, some of them have like a bit more detail than just the sort of outline shape. Like this one, it's got like, you know, the eye sort of etched into it and like the gap between its feet. And even I think like the cow one doesn't have anything extra, but like the flower, for example, has like the center sort of pattern, kind of semi-cut or yeah, it is actually it is cut all the way through. So yeah, it's kind of a nice little uh, additional kind of detail, not just uh, a plain shape for all of them. So yeah, that's cool. And obviously that goes for the Mr. Bob logo too. Um, so that's all the whimsy pieces that I could find for this one. Um, so before we get stuck into puzzling, let's quickly chat about how I'm going to approach this puzzle. So um, with this one, I mean, it's a lot less pieces than the other one. So I'm guessing it should be fairly quick to do. I'm going to I'm planning to just do it in one whole session um, and then just talk to you at the end about my experience with it. Um, I feel like maybe this time we can do the border first because it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be so many pieces that will be overwhelming. I think, um, you know, it might be a bit more straightforward with this one. But um, regardless, I guess we can still, I can still like sort of pull out bright colors like we've got the red dress of the mum and the blue dress of this little girl here and we've got the cow which is going to stand out and I guess also the sky and even the roof the tin roof of the house so there's definitely like you know quite a lot of distinct bits and yeah and just because it is a smaller piece count uh, I think once I start filling in some of those it'll be a lot easier to place the other parts um, so uh, yeah that's my plan and I think we should get into some puzzling finished this super fun puzzle and yeah I just really love how it's turned out it's really colorful and bright and there's just lots of really silly cute details in it that I didn't notice the first that I sort of noticed as I was putting it together uh, like this sort of uh, very crazy looking chicken and this dog that's befriended a chicken and you know just little cheeky things like one of the babies is about to turn on the hose when this child over here is looking down the hose and there's a poor cat dressed in a little bonnet and bow in like a pram. So yeah, there's lots of like very fun, uh, very whimsical, quirky things going on in this picture. So yeah, I really enjoyed putting this one together. It was just a lot of, just a lot of fun really. Um, so this one was also very quick and quite
quite easy to put together. It was almost the opposite of the previous puzzle. So it only took 52 minutes to put together. I mean, it's a lot less pieces for a start. Um, and also the image is just very like bright and has a lot of very distinct uh, things going on in it. So uh, it's really easy to sort of see at a glance where everything's gonna go. Whereas the other puzzle was like, you know, quite tricky with all the foliage and a lot of like, you know, green grass and things like that. So yeah, very different puzzles. Um, so yeah, in terms of like the pieces, um, they were just really nice to handle. Um, they are a bigger size and I'm, that might be because it's a smaller piece count that does seem to happen a lot with even uh, like cardboard puzzles where sometimes a smaller piece count tends to have larger pieces. So I'm not too sure if the pieces are large in all of their fiberboard puzzles or just because it's a smaller piece count. I'm thinking the latter. Um, but yeah, I really liked them. They were still very nice and thick, even though they are thinner than the other puzzle and they were nice to handle um, and felt very smooth, but also they weren't at all uh, glossy or didn't have any sheen when I was putting it together. So yeah, it was, yeah, really a nice puzzling experience. And yeah, they, all the pieces fit together how they should. There weren't any false fits. Um, it does, you know, had that looser fit that wooden puzzles do. So that was fine. That's what I expected. Um, and then in terms of dust, yeah, I just had a little bit of that sort of black dust you get from like, I guess, laser cut wooden puzzles on my hands afterwards, but no big deal, just washed right off. Um, but yeah, but no actual dust on the board. And yeah, no damaged pieces. All the pieces look perfect and pristine and yeah, just fantastic. And yeah, I yeah, I think overall it was a really fun puzzle to put together and I really liked the like sort of uh, Australiana and just fun whimsy pieces that they put in this one as well. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend this one. I think obviously this particular artwork is really great for kids or, you know, if you're a fan of the artist's work, um, yeah, it's just a very like light-hearted and you know cute image to put together. Um, so, but you know that being said, I really enjoyed it too. So obviously, it's fine for adults to do too. Um, so in a sec, I am going to you know summarize my experience of like both puzzles and the brand as a whole. I have to say, I really enjoyed my puzzling experience with both of these puzzles, even though they're so different from one another. So the Gothic Chapel one was just an absolutely stunning image to piece together. And it was also quite challenging, especially with all the greenery and the irregular piece shapes and lots of whimsy pieces. It was quite tricky and definitely tested my brain, but it was also a lot of fun. Um, the quality was fantastic. I love the thickness of the pieces. The 4.5 millimeters is just a really nice thickness to handle and just made picking out the pieces a lot easier, especially since they were on the smaller side. Um, and they were also just very satisfying putting them into their correct spaces. They just sort of went together really nicely. And I really enjoyed the essential oils in this one as well. I just found them very relaxing and calming and yeah, it was just a bit more added fun, I think. So I think if you're looking for a wooden puzzle that's you know a higher piece count and is a bit more challenging, I definitely recommend this one for you. And the other one that I just did, which is Mum, There's a Cow in the Yard, which I just thought was the cutest and most hilarious image. Um, yeah, I really love this one too. The image was just so bright and colorful. Lots of very silly, fun details, very whimsical. And yeah, it was really just quick and easy to put together. And the quality was fantastic as well. Even though this was made with the 3.5 millimeter fiber board, it was equally as good quality as this one. Um, just the pieces were slightly thinner and uh, I think because it's a smaller piece count, the pieces were larger in size. But yeah, they were also really lovely to handle. The thickness of the fiberboard is still quite thick, especially compared to like other wooden puzzles out there. I think it's just as thick as those, maybe more. And so yeah, it feels really good to handle and is just as satisfying, you know, piecing it together as this one, I think. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed that one as well. And yeah, I think, you know, if you're just looking for a fun, quick puzzle to put together or you've got kids, uh, yeah, I think this one would be a great one for you. Let's have a quick chat about the price. Uh, wooden puzzles do tend to be more expensive, especially compared to like cardboard puzzles. And these two are no exception. They are a more high end price point. Um, this one here, the 751 piece one is 104 Australian dollars on the website. 
Um, I definitely think that, you know, it sort of fits the price range of wooden puzzles. So yeah, it meets my expectations. I'm not at all shocked by that price or anything like that. Um, and you know, I think you're getting a really nice quality product with that beautiful like thickness of the pieces and even like added essential oils if you choose to uh, for that price, you know, and you get all the extras as well, like the drawstring bag and little reference picture and you know, nice packaging and stuff like that. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this one, um, especially if you are looking for, you know, a beautiful and challenging puzzle and also a puzzle that, you know, is Australian made made with Australian materials and also has Australian artwork. So yeah, definitely recommend that one. Uh, this one here, I also really enjoyed it. Um, it was a completely different experience than this one, but equally as enjoyable. Loved how quick and easy it was and you know how suitable it is for kids as well or anyone just looking for just a fun, quick puzzle to put together. And you know, even though this was made from the slightly thinner fiber board, I thought it was really nice quality as well. The pieces still felt fantastic. Um, yeah, and I was actually looking online and they had the same puzzle and same piece count in the wooden pieces and the price was quite a lot more if you got that option. So it was 70, 79 Australian dollars for the wooden puzzle version. So I think, you know, if you want a wooden puzzle but you don't want to maybe spend as much or you have a smaller budget for your puzzles then trying out the fiber board could be a really good option because, you know, to me it felt like really great quality um, and was just still a really fun and enjoyable puzzling experience but it is quite a lot more economical than the sort of thicker wooden pieces so yeah just something to keep in mind um, you know if you don't want to spend as much but you know you still really want to try out a wooden puzzle that's a really great option so yeah i would definitely recommend this one as t this one as well and yeah, this one is also Australian made with Australian materials and the artwork is Australian too. So yeah, I think both of these are just really beautiful puzzles and would definitely recommend the Mr. Bob puzzles in general. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of these two puzzles, which one was your favorite and why, and have you tried Mr. Bob puzzles before? If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. You can also find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.